mademoiselle Yes. Quel est votre nom Elizabeth. Pour vous, Elizabeth. Oh non, non, I, I, I couldn't. I, I can't accept. Je vous en prie, j'insiste. Oh, thank you. The first episode of Burial at Sea was good, but it felt divided, with one half sectioned off for exploring and the other half demarcated for murder. Episode 2 not only fixes this problem, it's so well developed that it almost feels like a full game. It's the kind of DLC we've been waiting for since completing Bioshock Infinite, and if you have any investment in the series, it's something you won't want to miss. What was that you said about Rapture? I could get you back to Rapture. And how you plan on doing that, sister? You some kind of magician? Bioshock has always done an excellent job crafting intricate settings, and this episode is no exception. Almost every single area further expands upon ideas, people, and places found in previous games. After completing Burial at Sea, we're left with a much better understanding of the Bioshock universe, and with a few loose threads nicely wrapped up. It's done so well that the episode comes across not only as an end to Infinite, but a celebration of the series. Are you in the know? Of course, not every element hinges on material built up in past games. So many areas cause you to stop and stare just because of how elaborate they are. The Manta Ray Lounge, for example, is a restaurant that features a gorgeous lobby with giant murals plastered on large circular walls and a glass floor that gives off a blue tint thanks to the oceans of rapture shining through below. Unlike the previous episode, such locations are found throughout this concluding chapter. There's plenty to see up until the end, and some of it is even optional. Do you know what they call someone who enters a man's home? Uninvited. The entire DLC offers such a fine level of care and craftsmanship that it's easy to lose yourself in the world, when the gameplay isn't trying to pull you out. Unlike Episode 1, which starred Booker, the gunslinging protagonist of Infinite, Episode 2 casts the more thoughtful Elizabeth as the heroine. She lacks Booker's rechargeable shield to absorb bullet damage, instead relying on stealth to take down splicers. Several new tools help keep things quiet, including a plasmid that allows her to see enemies through walls, and a handheld crossbow for silent kills. I sure would love some At first, stealth is a welcome change from the murder-everything-on-sight mentality of the past, but the switch isn't very successful. Enemies are just too stupid to encourage any real thought with your approach. Numerous times, we found ourselves in the open right in front of a splicer, and they completely fail to notice us. When you are found, enemies like to charge in one at a time, making them trivial to put down. Such unconvincing behavior saps tension from a lot of situations. Honey the underwhelming combat is a persistent issue, but since clearing a room is generally easy, it's never too annoying for too long. Instead, you'll spend most of your time hunting for bits of narrative crammed into nearly every corner. Burial at Sea shows how important it is for a game to instill a sense of place and how far attention to detail can go. Simply walking around and taking it all in is a pleasure in and of itself. I've come round to your way of thinking. Have you? Yes. I do believe one can change things, but after all the bother, one often wishes that one had not. It's hard not recommending Episode 2 for anyone that remotely cares about Bioshock. We won't spoil the surprises here, but the sheer scope of the episode and what it accomplishes with the story makes it feel essential. Even more importantly, Episode 2 is the best kind of DLC by being both distinct and deeply connected with its associated game. If you're willing to invest in the struggling first episode, Episode 2 considerably strengthens this interesting extension of Bioshock's world.